this. So this bezel cup looks good. Just as a reminder, um, you wanna use dental floss to check your bezel. So this is her bezel. I lay it across. Looks really good. It fits perfectly. So I don't wanna push it all the way down because I don't wanna really, really shove it in there. Um, but let's see. But it's looking good. I could probably push this right side down a little bit more, but I'm not because right now the shape is looking good. Um, so it's all cleaned up. It looks great. Lisa filed and sanded and not yet polished, but we'll get there. So I'm going to pop that out and we're just going to put this, put a jump ring on the top. It's pretty simple. We're going to put a jump ring on the top and get it ready to be hanging pendant. Um, so I'm just going to cut a little length of wire just for the moment. It's probably too long, but so you certainly could make your own cute little bale, as we call it in our field. So like a bale is like where the jump ring attaches to the chain. So there's a little handmade bale, super simple. If you're like, oh, this is too wide, you can take your pliers and give it a little squeeze to sh change the shape, get it to be how you want. A little letter U, but there's really no rules. There's a million different bale shapes you could use. But for Lisa, I think we're just gonna do a little jump ring. I think they're sweet and easy and I love the aesthetic of it. Um, I buy them pre-made. So it's just a little jump ring ready to go. Certainly you can make your own jump rings. They're really fun to make, but it's tedious. Um, so when you buy them though, they become, they come sort of split. So I always take the time to grab my two flat nose chain nose pliers and just make sure the ends come together nicely. So you can see that. So I want the ends to come together nicely and the seam is going to be touching the bezel so that the solder not only connects the two things together, but also shuts that jump ring so then you have no open seams 